Question, can you make an entire drum and bass tune using just one synthesizer? Hi, I'm Clive and I'm the producer from the live drum and bass band Dr. Mika. I'm here today to set myself the challenge of making an entire drum and bass tune using just one synthesizer, the Behringer Neutron. The Neutron is a paraphonic analog synthesizer with multi-mode filter, envelopes, LFO, overdrive and a semi-modular patch system. The way I'm making this song is by sending MIDI information from my DAW into the USB input of the Neutron and then I'm recording the audio output from the Neutron back through my favourite preamp and back into the DAW to layer up each track one at a time. Alright, first we're going to make some drums, so let's start with the foundation, the kick drum. So to create a kick drum we need to have quite a fast snappy envelope which we'll come to in a minute but first we'll start off on the oscillator section. I've chosen a square wave oscillator which can also be called a pulse wave and I've tuned it down to where I think will be right for a kick drum. So then if we go across to the envelope let's open up the decay just so you can hear. There we go so that's about the length of the kick drum. Then what I'm going to do is go over to the filter section and I'm going to increase the resonance and then I'm actually going to tune the filter so that I can find the thumpy area. So we'll put that there. Now the most important part of this sound and something really great on the Neutron is the overdrive section. So if we just turn up the drive we can start to ramp up everything. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to bring back the decay just a tiny bit and then I think I'll tune this just a little bit more. Yeah that sounds good in there and then just add a bit of noise I think. A bit more drive. Yeah that sounds good to me. Okay, that's the kick sorted, so now let's go to what is seemingly the most important part of any drum kit in drum and bass, the snare drum. Right, making a snare drum, the first thing I want to do is use the oscillator for the low thump and I'll use some noise for the top end. So let's just put that alongside the pre-recorded kick so we can hear it. Okay, so you can hear that the snare doesn't quite sound like a snare yet, so let's increase the noise. Right, and I've also got the resonance and frequency tuned again to how I like it. Let's increase the decay so we can just hear the length of the snare increase. There we go. And then let's use the drive to really bring out that ra. Yeah, that's the whack. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Simple. Snare drum recorded, nice big donk on it. Let's go now to the hi-hats. Right, to make the hi-hat, we really only need noise. And because we don't want the oscillators, we can bypass the oscillators so they don't go to the filter by using the patch bay. So if we use the noise and we put that into the VCF in, the noise goes straight to the filter, no oscillators. So let's set things off and make the hi-hat. All right, so the noise is on full and we're going to open up the decay so we can hear it. Now you can have a really long open hi-hat or a nice short snappy one, which is what we want here. And I'm just going to have a little bit less attack or more attack, however you want to say it. And then I'm going to tune the filter just to get rid of some of that low end. There we go. And just note that I'm driving this really hard both of those. Right, let's check that out with the beat. There we go, that's exactly what I want. Right, we've got the drums sorted, so let's get the final part, the percussion, so we'll add some 16th note shakers just to give it that groove. Right, let's start out with this shaker. So as you can hear, it's programmed to 16th notes, and it's all about the attack and decay on this one. I've brought the drive right down, the tone right down, 
and I've set up the frequency where I want it. But listen to how the attack and decay. There, that's what really makes it sound like a shaker. Again, I've just patched the noise straight into the filter so there's no oscillators. Now, it's so simple when you know how. So let's just check it out with the beat. And I'll just take those down again so you can hear different ways. Now you can hear it's just sat off the back of the beat and it's really grooving behind the hi-hat. All right, the drums are sorted and I'm really happy with how they're sounding. So now it's time to get down to the bass. Right, for this first bass sound, I want it to be quite subby and quite muted so that the second bass sound I make in a minute is a lot more gnarly and there's a good contrast going on. So let's start by putting the waveform of this sound to a triangle, which hasn't got much harmonics. And we'll just press play now so we can hear it. Okay, so you can barely hear that. So let's open the filter. All right, now let's go to the envelope and let's make it a bit more snappy. That's a bit too much, so I'm just gonna take that back a little bit. Okay, I think that's about right. Let's play it with the rest of the song so we can hear how that sounds. All right, so then if you wanna hear the resonance, we'll turn that up. And I think I'll stick around there. Sounds good. Right, for this second sound, we're gonna make it nice and gnarly. So let's just set it running so we can hear what we're doing. Okay, just a click at the moment. So again, we'll turn up the decay so we can hear some tone. And let's uh, make the beginning a little bit more wop, 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 using that. Put some drive in. All right, let's change the oscillator, bring it down to a triangle wave with a little bit of sawtooth. And let's give it some more drive. Nice. Right, so when I make a tune, I often like to have different sounds to narrate the song. So at the beginning, I'll have quite a thin sound. And then as it progresses, a bit of a fatter sound. And then on the drop, make it really fat. So for the intro of this tune, I would go up to a high pass to make it nice and thin, like this. And then as it progresses, we'll go to the band pass. And then for the drop, we'll go for a fat low pass. And let's put some more resonance. Yeah, that sounded nice. For this alternative bass sound, it would be really hard to tell you exactly how I make it just from my words. So what I'm gonna do is just ask you, as with any of these sounds in this video, to freeze or pause the screen so that you can see the settings. So I'm gonna work backwards. I'm gonna play you the sound and then I'm gonna take things away because this sound is so specific and hinged upon all the different parameters working together that I think it's good if I start with the sound in place. Okay, so it's that really kind of DJ Hazard style drum and bass sound. Now, if I just take the filter one way or the other, you lose it, it's very specific. So what I'm doing is I'm tuning that filter to hit the sweet spot in there. There it is. And if I take out the noise, it suddenly sounds clean. And again, with the drive, if I remove the drive, it makes a huge difference. And it starts to sound really fruity around there, where it starts to distort and you get all those lovely harmonics. Mm-hmm. 
so you can just hear that it hits sweet spots and this synth is really a synth for tweaking just because if i change any of those components things really change a lot so anyway this is my second alternative bass sound and uh let's go with that and here's this sound with the rest of the beat so there we have it there's the drum and bass all made on the neutron but at this stage of any track that i'm making i'll always be thinking about narrating the song with some effects so i call it ear candy or painting and decorating we've made the house we've made the drums and bass that's the house now we've got to do all the painting and decorating with the effects when making sweeps in drum and bass i usually like them to go over a certain period of time so usually over eight bars so that they sweep during the music over an eight bar period and the way that you can make a sweep very easily is to take some resonance and sweep the filter so you can sound like this And the more resonance you put in, the more resonant the sweep becomes. So I'll set it about here for now. And what I like to do is rather than actually turn the knob with my hand, which I do do on some occasions, I can actually assign something to modulate this to turn the knob for me. So in this case on the Neutron, the mod depth here is automatically wired to the LFO. So I will have this LFO doing this for me. So let's just listen to how that works. And as I turn the LFO speed, I can go fast or slow. Now I've set up the LFO so it's on a ramp, meaning that it always goes upwards and then back down again. So it's... So what I'll do is set it to about eight bars so that it ramps up across, across eight bars. So let's just listen to that. There you go, so you can hear how that works. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the tone, whilst the, whilst the filter is going up, the tone itself is staying flat. So I actually want to make the tone, the oscillators, also go up in pitch. And the way I'm gonna do that is take a patch lead and I'm gonna put it into the LFO. So the LFO is not only controlling the filter, but it will control the oscillator one and two. So now this LFO is affecting the filter, but also it's gonna be tuning the oscillators. Check this out. Okay, so there's our pitch sweeping oscillator uh, pad. The telephone sound effect is one of the easiest to program. So what I'll do is just start with a very simple, pure type of oscillator. So that's a sine wave and a triangle. And you can adjust the tuning of that here. So I'll just keep it in the middle for now. And then what we do is apply an LFO to the filter. So if you just see here, we've got it set up to the square wave. So it's like a very definite pulse on and off. Bop, 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 bop. And then again, you can you can change the tuning of it. And you can also change the tuning here. So what I like to do is change the tuning of the telephone. So you can kind of pitch it with the tuning of the track itself that you're working on. So you can get in tune telephone sound effects. Uh, that's basically it for this one. So let's make a laser now, and a laser is very similar. The only difference really is that you can change the waveform to suit how you want your laser to sound. Lasers are often like, pow, pow, pow. So we go to that, and then what we need to do is put some pitch into this, because at the moment it's just the filter. So again, we'll take the LFO setting here, 
and we'll plug it into the pitch of oscillator one. And you'll hear how now, that now affects the pitch. There you go. And we can speed it up or slow it down. Now that's a classic kind of laser sound. Just to show you something else with this, instead of going straight into the oscillator one, we can go into the attenuation here, and that means that we can actually turn down the effect of the pitch going to the LFO. So let's now take the attenuation out and put it into the oscillator. And then you can use this knob to decide how much you want that effect to work. So when it's at full, it's the same as having this lead out. So let's set it up around there. That's like a classic dub reggae style laser. And then what we can do to get the authentic sound is to use this delay. So we'll put a delay onto that now so you can just hear how that sounds. And this delay is brilliant because if you turn it right up, you can get self oscillation and some weird crazy effects. So check this out. And let's try one more of those. This is how I would probably set it up just to have it in the mix would be around here. There we go. For this final sound, which I'm going to call a kind of pad drone sound, I'm going to set up the sample and hold section so that you can see how that works and you can hear how that works. So what I'll do is set the sample and hold to go into the attenuator, which is here. And that means that you can adjust the level of the sample and hold effect. And then I'm going to go out of the attenuator into the oscillators one and two. So if you listen to the effect of that now. So it's very R2-D2. Well, I'll slow that right down and I'll turn the effect down. So it very subtly adjusts the pitch. And then let's let's turn up the drive a bit. And let's apply some delay. And that will be my intro sound to the song. Actually, one last thing, let's try. Ah, uh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'll record that now. And then we'll be able to hear the final song all together.
So there you have it, a brand new track made purely on the Behringer Neutron. So when I set myself this task, I wasn't sure exactly what I could achieve, but I found that the Neutron was really user friendly. There's so much depth within this one small unit that you are actually able to make a whole vast variety of sounds. I think the reason the drums sound so snappy is because the envelopes are really, really tight and I could definitely recommend them for drums. You heard yourself, with the bass tones, things are really fat and juicy and you've got so many options with the different filters. The overdrive gives the whole machine so much tone and possibilities for sculpting that tone. And then with the patch bay on the right hand side, it makes so many options possible to you. So I would definitely say if you wanted to try this sort of task yourself, try it on the Neutron, see if you can come up with something yourself.